right there we go yeah Valfira right this is very exciting here so we've been using this right and it, it works very much like the fluorescent acrylic version here well however most folks can't get this outside the well nobody really apparently can get this outside the US right but you can get these and you can also get linseed oil right linseed oil what happens when you mix that with the linseed oil you get this look at that it's my own fluorescent oil paint there oh but you get more because you get this you get this you get this 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 also this and also this right here uh, so tutti frutti it's just linseed oil uh, whether it's boiled or baked or whatever I don't know I'm sure it's not boiled it's uh, well let's see uh, doesn't say it just says linseed oil so it's linseed oil and we'll just uh, go with that and again now here's the deal all fluorescent paints even this one even though it's oil paints are super translucent right super translucent however these guys when you take this and you mix it with the with the linseed oil guess what they're totally opaque they are totally opaque look at this huh check that out that's opaque right there and when I this thing took uh, what was it uh, th I think uh, a kilted Viking how you doing yeah Valfira I think they didn't I think we got everybody against us now because they they hated the idea that I just made this myself so it's just like the metal paints that we did so yeah tutti frutti I, I think uh, since it doesn't say it's got to be raw right wouldn't you say so must be raw now I mean obviously there's a there's a little bit of a coloration to it but uh, I don't know I think it could still be raw don't you think hey Sipstorm how are you doing so yeah this is pretty insane the fact that this is opaque so that right there that is this no white added to it yeah there was no cadmiums added to any of this stuff this took about 11 minutes to paint this whole thing because it's all opaque hey more hips more hipster how you doing uh, let's see uh, oak and brush nice to see again oak and, oak and brush now what's really interesting look at the difference this is actually more intense than this because this is basically all straight up fluorescent paint this is sort of fluorescent paint obviously mixed with cadmium scarlet cadmium yellow other stuff like that this is actually just straight up cadmium, uh, cadmium paints here Uh, let's see do you use raw linseed oil to oil your wood level so tutti food now does your does it look like this so you're using raw right yeah you're using raw does it look like this or does it uh, have a clear look to it I guess that's the next question all right so Valfair we'll look at these in film noir in just a second but so these are remember the green stuff world metal powders we mixed them with linseed oil we got this well I mean look at this this is just this is absolutely incredible so I just made these last night this is a uh, well the, for the folks that are patreons you should have this video already because I put this up now look over here on the palette this is nuts this is absolutely nuts how opaque this stuff is it's just it's insane so now I'm really curious to see what the heck happens with these other ones right even this this blue now of course I was just thinking I'd be mixing them with regular just oil colors you know like usual but I think these are these are potential standalones right there uh, so two different it's amber like that one so pretty sure it's raw uh, Olive how are you doing again here let's do this yeah, let's have these two next to each other and let's do uh, let's do some of this 
I was just wanting, I wanted to see if there's anything you could see in black and white that that doesn't show up with color like it's like infrared. Ah, look at this. So ah, uh, you know what the computer did do a restart. Oh, an update. I'm sure it probably did some stupid update or something like that. Orthober, it's really it's crazy because I'm just uh, let me grab the ones that I was hoping to find for you. Ah. So these were the the two GSWs that I pfft, it would be helpful if I brought this color back. There we go. All right, so there you go. Look at these things. Is this crazy or what? And it works really nice because here's a and we also made blue metallic paint, green metallic paint, red metallic paint. We all made a whole bunch of other stuff, but this was like 10 minutes. Literally 10 minutes with the oil paints. And uh, here is, oh yeah, this is the one with the, the greens that we did right there. Ah, Laminus, how you doing? Nice to see you again. Ah, Diomedes Industries, how you doing? Ah, folks, be sure to give uh, Diomedes Industries a follow while you're at it, too. So, Nessie, check this out, man. This is This is crazy. So, this... Not only is it fluorescent, it's opaque like this. It's this kind of opaque. Yeah, it's like cadmium opaque. I don't know how much these cost, but I'll tell you what, one of these costs a whole lot less than one of these. And let's see if we can do a little bit of quickie pre-glaze on this. Like so. Uh, Ollie's doing some weathered blue, red, and white scream. Scream? Scheme. All right, we've got our Van Dyke Brown. This is mostly going to be Van Dyke Brown, probably Perlene Black. Maybe a little indigo here and there. Speaking of indigo, there it is. Some indigo now in the rocks here. More of our... Van Dyke Brown into our rocks. I'm using a little more thinner here because, as we've said before, that's a very rough surface. So we need that to... It'll soak it in, and it's just kind of hard to get that covered with the usual dryer approach. The dryer approach up here, of course, because, well, plastic, not as absorbent as uh, tree bark and cork and that sort of thing. All right, now we'll start to shift over to our purling black aka super dark green which should also be a little bit staining as would some of our thalo green this is all just going to look like basically dark black until we start to remove this and then you're going to see oh a little bit of a different look once we start to remove this as we get al in the house al how the heck are you doing nice to see you back Uh, so, Al, did you, uh, I don't know, did you see the latest craziness with the, uh, with this right here? Mixing it with the fluorescent, or, or sorry, with the, uh, just with our linseed oil. Boy, was that some fun stuff. Uh, so, uh, boy, it's, uh. Uh, uh, actually, boy, uh, Windsor Newton should not be expensive in Europe. It's made in France. That's the weird thing. But you could try Gamlin. You could try, I know there's, well, people are using Utrecht. People are using uh, Rembrandt, I think. They're using that. So you could maybe look into those. Now, Gamlin probably is also a, just, uh, it's another a U.S. brand, so that might not be that much cheaper for you yeah al the fact that they're opaque i mean the, the the fact that they would just make fluorescent paint is cool especially for folks that can't get the marion street but the fact that they were so darn opaque is just like huh look at this i'm actually throwing a little bit of the uh that's some of the fluorescent blue just got in there 
I don't know. Let's see what happens. I doubt it's going to be a staining color, but then there's a whole bunch of other things about these fluorescents that I thought, too, that uh, was not the case. So we're, we're going to find out. One way or another here, we're going to find out. All right, Darian, no problem. So our next stream, at least the, the plan for it anyway, is going to be Thursday. Now, it is going to be terrain because we have a lot of terrain to get done. Now, last Thursday, this is what we made right here. That is actually about two and a half times the size of our first building that we made two Thursdays ago and that we painted up here with the oil paints. So hopefully you can join us again Thursday. It's going to be a later start time. So for you, it's probably going to be about, I don't know, 7-ish in the morning when we're going to start because we start about 11.30-ish my time. So that could be 6 or 7 your time, depending exactly where you are in Europe there. So Al, when I was actually able to paint this over the you know regular oil, I, I couldn't believe it. I was stunned. Here it is. So that's that's the miniature right there. There's no cadmiums there. That's crazy. That is absolutely nuts. So Tukale, I hope that you're doing well. Uh, well happy Monday and well Tuesday. Of course for Stila it's already Wednesday. It might actually be Thursday for Stila right now. So we'll just say happy Thursday for Stila because she lives in the future where there is nothing but citrus and birds apparently. Which means she probably doesn't like the Dunlendings. She probably doesn't like the Dunlendings because uh yeah, you know, I she may not like the Dunlendings. I mean the whole crow thing. She may not like the Dunlendings. So yeah, this was uh some pretty crazy stuff. Oh, and by the way, you could in theory mix this with uh linseed oil as well and have glow in the dark oil paints. I mean, we've gone this nuts is a little bit further towards insanity. Really that, you know, any different. All right, where's our, uh... so this is kind of post pre-glaze. This is our pre-glaze right here. Now we've got sponges sitting around here somewhere. I'll start taking away some of this stuff. Yeah, I see steel. It's not just a uh, days ahead for steel. It's already June. It's already June. So see what we're going to do here. We're just going to take some of these guys. and We're going to start removing some of this. And it's going to be really fun. Because now it's going to start to reveal all the colors underneath that have been somewhat stained by the perline black, which has about the same kind of staining possibilities as, say, indigo does. Again, staining colors. I know people want a list of them. Well, <laughs> you could count the list with five fingers and maybe have one or two left over. There's just not that many. There's some that are staining-ish, but as far as like straight-up staining colors, there's just a few. Again, we're just going to take some of this away here. With the sponges. And the fluorescent blue has been really effective. Uh, I actually have, I have fluorescent blue and acrylic. It, uh, it Think of it as just something that you add to another color. By itself, not going to do very much. But if you add that fluorescent blue to another blue... Well, you just made that blue more intense. So actually, Stila, I was thinking cobalt blue mixed with the fluorescent blue could maybe be a really crazy intense blue. So we're just we're going to do a little bit of Stila right here. We're just going to take the sponge and we're going to shove it down into the crevice there. See what we can pull out of here. So that looks already quite different, right? So not only is that well, a zenithal-ish type of an effect. But it's something we can mix with, right? All the colors that we put on here are going to mix with this now. Instead of this just being a dead, 
primer zenithal that you're just going to paint over pretty much anyway. Wow, it's kind of neat to see all the muscles and stuff that we sculpted here. Of course, I meant to uh, try and process some pictures so you could have a picture of this to look at while we're doing that. But today was a little bit of a crazy day, so we didn't get a chance to do that. I apologize. There we are. So this is a fire-forged horse with Tomb King's bits. So the Tomb King's head, you can see we sculpted all of this stuff with the muscles and everything. Tomb King's legs right there. Uh, so, yeah, like uh, I was just saying, you're essentially trying to target certain areas. Like here, see, I'm trying to take more of that away because I like that to be lighter. I'm also switching out the sponges because if I just do this up here and then over here, if there was green up there and I wanted it to be more blue here, well, I'm, I'm starting to transfer one color down to the other. I don't want to do that necessarily. And the pre-glaze is always different on every single miniature. It will never be the same. Because every single miniature is, well, you're trying to do different things with it, right? All right, here's this thing again. Let's let's get to it. How's about we put some more green out here? It is such an easy way to get yourself lots of fun color straight away. So again, this is uh, what we're looking to do here, something like that. And I'm going to get a little smidge of our thinner into this. Maybe a hint of some thalo green as well. And let's have at it. Let's have at it. Now, this is not as dry as what we used on our other one. Just want to see what would happen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. The, oh, gosh. The base is for sure, right, Al? Uh, so, yeah, Nate's the... Uh, it's the, the oils for me have really just created so many more possibilities. And every time I think that we've maybe kind of exhausted... I don't want to say exhausted the possibilities, but it's like, well, okay, we, you know, we'll... We've done all of the stuff that, that the major things, right? There, there'll be little things we find here and there, but all the big stuff, we've kind of discovered all that. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we haven't even gotten started yet. And, and of course, as uh, folks like Stila and Pun Expected and Deuce and everybody else, uh, they're all doing their, their experiments with things they find new stuff they find different colors because well they live in different places and they say well you know yeah this is not a Windsor Newton color but I can get this and this paint that's well in the area where I live or where they say I can't get that which then prompts us to try and find ways to make them be able to have what they need so here's again this is where Mixing with the pre-glaze, right? That's what we want to see happen, is the pre-glaze get some mixing here. We're not just trying to cover it up and wipe it out. Otherwise, we could just do one of those dead Zenithal priming things that does nothing. We want to actually be able to mix these together. And if you remember, where's our infantry guy here? So, see all the bright colors on him? Well, he looked like this not that long ago. So, again, all of those bright colors, all the rust and everything, all that's going to go into this guy right here. And, well, <laughs> yeah, Al, the, the freehand stuff, I wasn't sure. Even myself, I thought, okay, well, yeah, the, the oils are probably not something I'll do freehand with. Well, well, I was wrong. <laughs> Oils make that easier. Of course, we say that about everything. It's just like, well, there's there's no way oils can make that easier. Well, until we try it, and then we find out that it does. And then it's like, well, oils aren't going to make that easier, too. 
Uh, until we find out that they actually do. I'm going to say, man, what the heck else can oils make easier? Apparently just everything. Uh, Nessie, you know it's just it's a matter of time, right? It is a matter of time as we take some asphaltum, we combine it with our terra rosa. I'm going to try and just impart a little bit of our weathering type of stuff into this. And kind of a glazy form. And it, we're just touching the brush to the miniature. We're not brushing this on. We're just literally touching the brush like that. That's all we're doing. Letting it do its thing. I know that can be scary, letting paint do its own thing. But you'll be glad you did. Yeah, uh, it looked like you were having some fun doing the, doing the whole knot work thing. Yeah, doing the knot work stuff. Yeah, Al, actually, we were doing something. I forget what we were painting. I think it was Saturday night. We were painting something, and I just said, oh, what happens if you do this? And I just took the brush, like, black, and just went, oh, it was this thing. Yeah, I think we just took a big old black brush stroke and went, like, zoink right across the fur, something like that. So, again, here's another example. Now, this is the regular Marion Street fluorescent green. And now we're using our fun special homemade green fluorescent paint because, you know, very cool using your own stuff, right? All right, I'm going to throw a little more of the asphaltum into this. We will be adding some more lighter colors to the rust and everything else. Eventually, more armor over here, uh, some over there, too. This way, maybe a little bit on the handle there. Ah, Nate, that doesn't sound sound too bad. So, cause, cause, so cause eight, it's uh, this one right here. This is the Windsor Newton. Ten colors in here on Amazon, somewhere between 22 to 26 bucks. Let's say you go to Michael's, use the coupon or something like that. Now you're looking at uh, potentially as little as $17, something like that. Now, gambling starter sets, I don't know how they compare price-wise necessarily. They're probably similar. Now, ones like Williamsburg, those are going to be more pricey. There's no doubt about that. That's more as full um, smidge of Van Dyke Brown too. Yeah, just to get a little bit of there we go. Some dark here before we come back in with those lights. It's really weird to be painting a Tomb King's horse head. Oh my goodness. Now that is uh I didn't think I'd ever see one of those again. And apparently Tomb King stuff is really uh, pricey on eBay. That's the last thing I would have thought. <laughs> you could have given that stuff away not long ago. Not sure why it's so pricey now. Hey, Landris, how you doing? Uh, so, Ozzy, that is definitely something... Uh, I've, I've, so say we all. <laughs> I've seen people use a bit of a steam shovel approach, right? And Land ah, thank you so much, Landrast. Thank you. Ah, thanks. That so, Landrast, this has been pretty crazy, man. So this is with our brand new opaque fluorescent oil paints. Is this nuts or what? This is crazy talk here. So, Nate's, I was uh. I was sent those to use. They were sent to me. And I was all excited because I used the uh, MIG Ammo oil brushers. And I, I've used them for years. I've got lots of tutorials using the oil brushers. We've used them on stream. And those Optilung paints were a massive disappointment. Glossy, slimy, everything you don't want in an oil paint. Well, actually, any miniature paint. So I don't know what the deal is with those, but other people that have tried them, 
There's a few people that have used them. They're kind of used to the whole slimy, glossy thing. They're okay with that. But for folks that don't want slimy, glossy oil paint, yeah, those are not something you want. So, Bitron, how you doing? I hope that all of your terrain stuff has gone well. And, yeah, Bitron, you could... You could literally make a dozen different buildings that would fit on top of your, your your little base right there. I mean, I just all I kept thinking of was more and more things that you could stick onto that base and just be uh, interchangeable, right? So that should be really cool. Uh, Nate, uh, and I can send you, uh, you know, just uh, I'll shoot you some notes or you can ask me some some questions too if you're not quite sure. But you could always check out the videos because, uh, well, we certainly, we're still using the, the start. Although now, yeah, now that we're mixing our own uh, fluorescent oils, I don't know. Will we ever be buying regular oil paint from anybody again? I'm sure we will. I just wanted to give Nessie a little bit of a heart attack right there. <laughs> because Nessie will have that paint color in his hand. And I actually have a special computer program that keeps track of that. It's like a little, uh, there's a computer chip in his arm, and it automatically reads the barcode of what he's about to buy, and that sends me data so that I can actually then go back and wipe out that color and, and take it out of the palette. Yep, that's uh, <laughs> as Nessie, who has been, who has been Payne's, Payne's grade. <laughs> Ness, the, the very painful pains gray experience for Nessie. Uh, the, the, as Nessie has a moment of silence for pains gray. Yeah, so Bitsran, I think, uh, well, you can't go wrong with interchangeable terrain. I mean, uh, yeah, Landrest, you've got, oh, actually, Landrest, I'm really looking forward to seeing. Uh, the landscapes that you do on those canvases. Oh, man, I, I think it's going to be a blast. Uh, where's my, there's my thalo green. I'll put some of this in here. Wow, look at how it changes that color just a smidge there. So say we all. So say we all. Oh, we get the, oh, thank you so much, uh, Super Snake Games. Thank you so much. That is appreciated. Thank you for so much for that sub. Oh, I'm looking around. Oh, I, I believe it or not, I actually had a giant snake figure here that I just painted, and I was gonna throw that up on screen to to say hello there with the snake. But I think he has already been packed away. But thank you so much for that sub. That is much appreciated. Uh, actually, no. Uh, believe it or not, Al, those uh, those two together are very well. <laughs> You will get a kick out of this. So, Payne's Gray, right? Moment of silence for Payne's Gray. Ironically enough, there is Pigment Red 101 in there. Not kidding. The same thing as Asphaltum and Terra Rosa is in Payne's Gray. It, it's all crazy talk, right? It's all craziness. Oh, thanks, Super Snake. Uh, actually, if you've got any, uh, you know, uh, well, Instagram links or whatever links, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe of a Discord or something like that, of, of some of the things that you have painted, feel free to throw those in the chat so that maybe people could get a look at those and see what kind of fun stuff you've been doing. Yeah, so are we just going to have to have a funeral pyre for Payne's Gray? So we're just going to let that do its thing and a oh, blendy brush. A little bit of a blending brush action going on there. Oh, let's see. Uh, it is a uh, it is night night time for Valfara. Well, hopefully we we'll see if well I guess uh, yep Friday for you and and Thursday here. Or unless you got things going on on Thursday, but uh, well, hopefully the the toe injury is fully 
healed now and you are good to go. Ah, but Super Snake, you know, this the oil painting stuff, I know we, we joke about it, we have some fun with it and everything. It is such a relaxed way to paint stuff. Just just knowing that there's no rush, knowing that if you want to make a, a huge change to the miniature, well, yeah, that's no problem either. That's that's just easy to do. And I'm I'm so glad that it kind of I, I hopefully it makes people think like they don't have to be rushing around, that maybe they can also take their time a little bit, but yet get things done faster. That odd combination of taking your time, don't be hasty, but yet getting things done faster because none of us has time to spare. I don't, you don't, nobody does. And now, now we get to the crazy part again where we have the opacity of these fluorescent. This is, this is just nuts here. So I'm going to just, this is a little bit of our yellow fluorescent that's going in there to not just lighten it up but practically add even more opacity to it not at all what you might expect uh, so again this is a figure that we converted along with a whole bunch of other ones this is on one of our thursday sculpting streams and you can just go back to probably september or so maybe i think when this was done you can watch the sculpting process. But I've only seen this one basically as green stuff for so long that it's kind of neat to see it actually get some paint on it now. And we did, yeah, we, we sculpted cloaks on these guys. We did all kinds of fun stuff with this. Just took a regular Army of the Dead. Cut him off at the waist. Put him on this horse. He cut off three of the horse's legs. And gave him Tomb King horse legs. I think we'll also maybe do the brighter eye. That. Gosh, as I do that, I just think... Well, I must have done that with Brilliant Yellow Pale. No, there's no Brilliant Yellow Pale on the palette. So when's the last time you guys saw something like that? No Brilliant Yellow Pale on the palette at all. It ain't there. <laughs> As other people that are saying, like, wait a minute. Wait, what's this? No Brilliant Yellow Pale? From the person who uses Brilliant Yellow Pale in everything? Don't worry. It ain't going anywheres. Uh, yet. Uh, thanks, Amateur Paint Hour. Yeah, this is all a fun part of our Army of the Dead. So here's the other one that we were just working on. And of course, we have Harold and the Heralds here. So there's Harold, and there's one of his Heralds. Uh, let's see. Uh, so, Dave, they do have some kind of a silver or chrome. However, however, you're in Spain, right? Look at this. Guess where this comes from? You know where this comes from. This comes from Spain. And they have aluminum, pewter, gunmetal. And I think they have four different... And this is actually good. Look at that. So that is not bad stuff. So this is also another option for you right here, and especially being in Spain, you should be able to just walk right over to Meg and say, hey, give me some of those oil brushes. So Nate, that is the fun thing, and that is why we tell people that, like that starter set you saw me flash in front of you, if you were to take all the paint and just kind of measure how much is left, after four years, and you know how much I paint here, I would say there is at least 56% of that left, maybe even close to 60% of those paints are left after four years, no, four and a half years of me using them. Someone who paints a lot. 
just even with acrylics that I've barely used over the course of the last year, those are those are running out faster. Those have actually run out of. Whereas the oils, <laughs> that's not even a threat. Uh, so Dave, actually, that is where I got the idea for mixing the paint in the jars with the thinner in the first place. Because I used the oil brushes for years. But then, well, uh, in, in March of 2020, I was supposed to teach classes at Adepticon. And I would have needed 130 oil brushes. I did not have the funds for 130 oil brushes. So I said, I have regular oil paints. So I basically took the oils and some thinner, mixed them in my own bottles, and obviously there were never any classes. But I said, uh, I've got all these things. What am I going to do with them? Well, then I just started using them myself. Uh, let me see. Now, Hawk Guts is done gluing dinos to himself. Now, now it's time to get some chow. Now it's time for a little bit of chow. And as opaque as this green has been, I really want you to see, I want to at least be able to do one of these guys tonight here because this was just shocking. And to, for folks that were just watching me painting literally this guy on Saturday, when you see the comparison, it's going to be, you'd just be amazed. And we did even throw some on here too. We were just doing a little bit of a dry brush thing. And that already made that so much more intense. So that, and that is the reason why I was kind of disappointed with the, what the heck are they, the Opti lungs, because, well, those both, those used to be the same company at one time. Well, clearly the Opti lungs came first, and those issues were then fixed with the oil brushes for the most part. Because those are not slimy. They don't take forever to dry. They are certainly not glossy. They are not glossy at all. Which is why I was just so absolutely shocked by those opti lungs. What, am I doing something wrong here? What is going on? All right, there's again some of our... That's our yellow fluoro working its way in there again to increase the opacity not just the lightness get some light on our scaly friends here and then maybe even a little bit oh, on the uh, base down here now there's going to be grass and other such things on this so we're not going to get too involved with the base Yeah, Nate, the, uh, it's kind of funny because I have all this yellow ochre and raw sienna and burnt sienna, and I don't use those anymore. I can't remember the last time I've used them. It's uh, Other colors just kind of took their place, and but I will be using those again, like you say, for terrain because I have tons of them. So, yeah, if you see me using those on terrain, don't be surprised because, well... I have a bunch of it, and I'm just going to use it to get rid of it. We certainly have plenty of terrain to paint. I mean, we have Urkin Brands Hall of the Very Cool. And now we've got all the furniture to go inside. Yeah, I've been printing out the furniture. Ah, thanks, Bithron. Boy, I don't know if you ever, if you ever got a chance to see these sculpted. But yeah, these were ones... Oh, actually, here's another one here, too. So yeah, these were ones that we sculpted on our, one of our Thursday streams. Ah, here's the other one. So these were really fun. Uh, where's my, Ah, there's my fluorescent blue, which we're going to mix with this lighter green to get this uh, a little cooler. Here. Ah, ha, ha, there we go. A little bit of a cooler green. I'm going to get that green nice and varied. Not all warm green. Well, not necessarily all green either. 
Now we're going to, not too long from now, we're going to be able to lighten up some of our rust and such. We'll bring in some Terra Rosa mixed with a little bit of our probably Camium Yellow. So a little bit of a bluish tone there on our horse, not just reflected light, but also a bluish tone. So yeah, Bithron, it was one of our sculpting streams that we did kind of early on. It might have been might have been the third or fourth sculpting stream that we did. And we've definitely we've sculpted a lot of things. I mean, there was the Great Beast of Gogoroth, of course, and there was our Eowyn bust that we sculpted and then we painted it up the very next day. Yeah, well, we uh, sculpted it on a Thursday and painted that up on a Friday. Yeah, that was certainly very fun. See if we can not just add some light to this, but also maybe a different color here. Onto his skull here. We have some individual teeths, and then we've also got sinew right there and some muscles and that was uh, another exercise in how to control green stuff right with mixing lots of the yellow instead of more of the blue and it really made a nice fine color that we could or find a material that we could sculpt with really well some super fine details Lighten this up some more. So yeah, we're starting to get our scaly friend there. Now we've got a whole bunch of sinews and such to do on the other side. We'll get that going. There. Lighten this up some more. So that's mostly our fluorescent blue mix, a little bit of our green, and then obviously we throw in some of our white. Let's go back to our warmer green here. This is still not as light as we can go. We could even go lighter than this if we wanted to. I think the last time I painted the head of a Tomb King's horse was probably 2014, maybe. And that was for our, well, our Tomb King's army that we did way back in the day. Our last ever Warhammer army for our last ever Warhammer tournament. Because not long after that, everything went away. Right now, let's get some white colors into his tail here. So again, this is a fire-forged horse with a whole bunch of Tomb King's bits. I just cannot get over the opacity of this because even when you take the so cadmium white and add it to, or not cadmium white, uh, cadmium yellow or titanium white, you add it to the fluorescent paints, they don't necessarily maintain their opacity. The fluorescent paints actually kind of cut down on the opacity. Ah, and Nessie goes, speaking of which, well, here's a little bit of a side, that, that side project we talked about in 2014. Yeah, this is it right here. So that's not all of the army. That's most of it. That's maybe 85% of the army right there. That <laughs> you'll see... So there's uh, also there was the first time we used fluorescent paints. Everything was either scratch sculpted or massively altered in some way. Like oh, those all that barding on those horses, they don't come that way. That was actually something that I made a sculpted in green stuff, made a press mold, and then repeated over and over again. Even that howda on top of the I'm pretty sure that is the oh not the necro sphinx. I think that's the war sphinx right there. I get more fluorescent paints. 
And everything you see on that top level, that's pretty much scratch sculpted, except for the Empire guys and the one, uh, yeah, the one Tomb Kings guy. All of those sphinxes, the Hyro Titan on the left, the Colossus on the right, the birdies, the catapult, all that stuff was scratch sculpted. And all of the hieroglyphs on the wall, they were real. The hieroglyphs actually said things. All right, Wally, well, thank you so much for joining us. We'll appreciate that as always. Yeah, the uh, all of the bases around the outside, the, all the movement trays, sorry, that all said those who enter the tomb cities of Susenej shall suffer a fate worse than death. And, of course, I was already planning the Bretonian army that was going to be a Zinch-tainted Bretonian army with you know, multi-headed horses, guys with two or three shield arms, all kinds of good crazy stuff. And, well, then things went boom, and it went away. Sad face, obviously. Because that was the next plan, was basically the... The Bretonians went into the tomb cities of Susenes and plundered stuff and found out maybe that wasn't such a great idea. Ah, Mini Grinder Studio. It's kind of crazy, right? The idea that you could get those pigments and the linseed oil and just kind of make your own. Maybe save a few dineros here and there. And what do we do with that? We buy more miniatures. Yeah, we buy more miniatures, we buy more terrain, we buy more printers. Because we're not spending a whole bunch of money on uh, paint necessarily, but we're still getting all kinds of fun stuff to work with, right? Ah, eh, Cinder, nice to see you again. I hope it's been a decent Monday for you. I'm having all kinds of fun using my brand new homemade right here at the green stuff world powder linseed oil not just fluorescent paint not just fluorescent oil paint opaque fluorescent oil paint it lives <laughs> yes uh, yes uh, mini grinder we definitely we we do oh wait that's uh that's actually some muscles right there how's about we come back to our blue over here and do that. What are, we, what are we thinking over there? Let's do some more like this. Uh, so Cinder, I hope that all the printing has been going all right, if not really well. Uh, I haven't printed anything the last few days. There's been too many other things uh, kind of going up. Plus, uh, already running low on resin, and I also need to get the other printer going. So. Yeah, I don't know how much printing we're going to be doing this week. Uh, mostly because the smoky black is, uh, well, I don't know if it's still out of stock. But I kind of slowed down on the printing once I saw that that was out of stock. Uh, Al, our next convention is, uh, which will, of course, have a Fort Wapple, is going to be Adepticon next year. Because... Uh, well, we weren't going to be doing any conventions this year anyways, but when I read the email that I got, I said, well, <laughs> there ain't no way there's going to be a Fort Wapple there. Uh, I think they're only doing like half of an artist alley, or maybe not even an artist alley, or if there is, it's going to be very, very, very truncated. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're not going to have an open painting area. So effectively, what you would have to do is uh, be 50 feet away from me watching a TV screen, which, uh, well, people could do here. Uh, let's see. Cinder found out. Can't finish my golden dragon print due to the wings are too big for the printer. Ah, Cinder. There's an Elegoo Saturns are gone. Uh, so Cinder, well, and also this is kind of a general out there for everybody else who is up on these things. Who is... Well, I don't know if there's a winner or a loser, but Frozen, Mighty, or Elegoo Saturn, which uh, which would you say is winning right now? 
yeah, Al, we, we weren't going to be doing any conventions. And then when I saw the email about all the things, I'm like, this is there's no way we can do any of our stuff that we would do. So, yeah, that just, uh, we just said, all right, well, uh, Adepticon is a really good starting point. So we'll just, uh, we'll do that. That should be perfect. Because Adepticon is uh, 45 minutes from our house. And not 908 miles, something like that, which is uh, what ReaperCon is. Yeah, so Cinder, it's just the 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 large format printer or the large printer is uh is a Saturn for Elegoo, but Mighty is the larger one for uh, Frozen. And I wasn't sure, you know, now that they maybe been out for a while, is there one that's kind of taken up the forefront with that? Uh, and the Saturn and better bang for the buck over the Frozen Mighty. So yeah, I don't know what the prices are on the two of them. I just wasn't sure if you know everything has usually a different type of an advantage over another one or a different disadvantage. So I wasn't sure if people were finding one to be better than the other for one reason or another. Yeah, Al, that's uh, with ReaperCon the last time we were there. I had to ship seven boxes of stuff plus haul an entire suitcase full of stuff with me. And that was just nuts. And that basically can never happen again because obviously we can't trust the post office anymore. So, yeah, that's uh, not quite sure how that's going to work moving forward. All right, so we're going to keep going with our lighter colors here as we look about $150 difference for the two. Now, I think the Saturn's been out for longer. I could be wrong, but I think so. I don't know if Lamines is still in the chat there because I, I think uh, Lamines also is pretty familiar with those and could offer some uh, opinion there. Yeah, Al, that was, uh, I think that was the year. Yep. Remember I had the big, the, the display with all the miniatures on it? Yeah, all that stuff had to be shipped, including the display. All the stuff you saw me use in there either had to be shipped to Reaper or I had to drag it there myself. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's why it kind of falls under the, ooh, this is really difficult. Ah, a couple of extra lights there now. And Al, actually, did you see that? Uh, I think it was always oh, FDM printed. That's right. But the guys that they were doing the CAV stuff, they said, "Look, um, we have to have this for a tournament thing in 40 minutes. Can you get this done?" And it was huge. It was like 24 inches long or something. And I I had to paint that thing and do some. I did some freehand stuff on there. I did some weathering on it. And that was all done in less than 40 minutes, I think. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, I just call it, uh, that's the, the Tiamat guy or whatever. And I guess apparently that's on their catalog cover or something now. Uh, he was half painted. I actually brought the pieces of him in my suitcase, if you can believe that, because I wanted to make sure he was going to be there. And he was in pieces, and I finished painting him. And <laughs> then uh, then he went into the uh, case there, and I guess he's uh, he should still be at Reaper, I'm pretty sure, to this day. All right, we're really enjoying all these lighter colors that we're able to get now with our... And we are adding a little bit of our opaque, our white now, to some of this. We also have to lighten up some of our a rust that's going to happen in here so that it lines up a little bit more with that guy, right? I think we've got that light enough. Let's see what we can do out here on this cloak. We're probably going to do some, some staining of that. 
I think we might have to respect the umber too. That's that's the one thing that we can't just because we're all excited about our new fluorescent powdered opaque paints and all that, we cannot disrespect the umber. That's a bad idea. That's a bad plan right there. Disrespecting the umber, always a bad plan. So yeah, that uh boy uh, that would actually I was painting with the oils at at the last Reprocon too. Yeah, I was painting the the King's King's Guard. Yeah, Song of Ice and Fire. I was painting the King's Guard with the oil paints, doing all the all the white and everything, the white uh, armor and the the cloaks and everything. That was pretty fun. And of course, that was uh, it was Reprocon the year before where. The the legendary introduction to Song of Ice and Fire happened. Ah, so Deuce. Check it out, man. It happened. It so happened. And it happened here. Yeah, this was all part of the video. It only took 11 minutes to paint that last night. Uh, so yeah, Al, that was when... Uh, Jim Ludwig came up to me and he says, so, man, what do you think about Song of Ice and Fire? And I went, Song of what? Again, never read the books, never saw the show, so I had no idea what he was talking about. He thought I was joking because he loves all things Game of Thrones slash Song of Ice and Fire. And he said, you know, Song of Ice and Fire miniature game. I said, what miniature game? Now, now he's starting to get a little bit aggravated because he thinks I'm still messing with him. And he says, you know, the Kickstarter. Now, I didn't see any Kickstarter. <laughs> so then he just, he kind of mutters a few choice words. And he says, I'll be back. And he comes in with that big starter box. You know what, what I'm talking about. And he slams it down on the table. He says, here, with maybe one or two other colorful metaphors. He says, look at those miniatures. Tell me what you think. And it was the halberds. That's right. Uh, some of the first miniatures that I grabbed were the halberds out of the starter box. Yeah, oh, that's... Uh, I'm pretty sure I had these there. Yeah, I must have had these there. I know I had them at Gen Con or whatever. But yeah, it was it was the halberds, and then of course, well, they were there. The painted ones were there not too long afterwards. Where's our? Uh, let's see if we can find them here for you. Nope, I think we actually scrolled on past those. Where's my halberds? There they are. So those were some of the first miniatures that I pulled out of the box, and I saw the pikes and and such, and the, well, the halberds. Sorry, and every one of them was perfect because they were hard plastic. So yeah, those guys were at uh, at Reprocon along with all the other song stuff. Yeah, let's get some of our rust up in here, like we do. And oh, we need some more of our lighter rust up there on his armor here. Might even throw a little bit of that into the horsey there just because. I don't know why. I just felt like it. And we'll maybe throw a little Terrosa on that too. Certainly use some over here. And then we'll, we're going to let that sit for a while. And then we will lighten that up the same way with a bit of our Camium Yellow and Bring it up to speed with our other guys. More armor there. Some more here. And then some over here too. And let's not forget this thing just sitting on the ground here. We'll tear a rosa into that. Maybe we'll get some of the Drax Fultum into that. Yeah, that works. Terra Rosa and 
some of our cadmium yellow for that brighter rust we were just talking about here. Maybe not quite so liquid as what we already have out here. Let's get some of it down onto our blade right there. Ah, Lothir and Drax. So, Drax, this is the latest video that we just did. So, for all the people that can't get the Marion Street fluorescent oil paints, Green Stuff World powdered pigments, linseed oil, mix it in a blister pack. You get this, but that's not all. But wait, there's more. Unlike all the other fluorescent paints, it's opaque. This took about 11 minutes because I was literally painting with progressively lighter uh, fluorescent paint, one layer on top of the other. So it was shocking to say the least. So Luthier, I hope that you're doing good too. Yeah, and I just put that video up on the Patreon page. So if, if folks are uh, haven't checked their Patreon emails yet, go check that out because no one was more surprised than me. First of all, that it worked, because I didn't think it was going to. Well, I, I wasn't sure, anyway. And I sure didn't think it was going to be opaque, because I've never, ever, ever seen opaque fluorescent paints. And as I remember, Wolf has just uh, put that link up there. If you could please shoot Drax a follow. Drax will be streaming later tonight. So Drax, what are, uh, well, you're not painting the uh, the Camelot stuff tonight, are you? Or are you, uh, I know you, I mean, now there's, I don't think you have that stuff prepped yet, or maybe you do. Maybe actually it arrived and you were able to get it all prepped. But in any case, Drax streams Sunday through Wednesday in the later evening hours. So Definitely follow Drax. Ah, it just came in today. Well, hopefully everything's intact and it's all good. And you'll be able to get it all ready. M maybe by the Wednesday stream or something like that. Well, not all of them. Maybe one of them. Because uh, I don't know how much uh, prepping goes into those... I don't think I've ever done, well, I don't know. It, it depends because <laughs> some of the other stuff that I've done from, gosh, why have I all of a sudden forgotten their names now? Big Child, I, it's taken a little bit of time to prep those. Just a little bit. Actually, that is uh, also armor there. So I think we're good with... Uh, Perhaps throwing a little bit of our rust in that area, too. Maybe a smidge more of our corrosion on that blade right there. So again, this is a horsey along with our other one here. We did three of these Riders of the Dead. Uh, converted those, of course, just out of plastic horses because, well, we had the plastic horses, we had the plastic army of the dead, and... The metal ones are not only super expensive, they are super fragile, and they really don't have much detail. And there's only, well, I think there might be two poses. I thought there was only one, but apparently maybe there's two. But I could quite literally make about ten of them for the cost of one. So, you know, that that kind of, that tends to factor in just a little bit. That was a rather, that's a stark price differential there. Oh, let's see, yeah, we'll mix our little bit of our, that's a perline black that's up there in our horse. So it's kind of fun to see him actually have some, some color on him, I gotta say. He is, he hasn't even been primed and ever since we originally sculpted this thing. So it's just neat to 
get a chance to see some color on them now. And guess and we get to test our brand new, brand spanking new homemade fluorescent oil paints. And and this right here, what's happening just there, I, I still am amazed because having just used the fluorescent green, the regular Marion Street uh, on this guy here just last Friday. And look, it's not even as intense as this is. It's, it doesn't even have the same intensity. So it's actually, oh, that's the other thing too, is I was thinking that potentially you could use some of like the yellow and the light orange and the, the red. You could use those almost as cadmium substitutes, potentially. It, it's not going to be the same thing. But for folks that are like, ah, cadmiums are expensive, you could just say, hmm, linseed oil, not really expensive. The green stuff world powders, not cheap, but certainly not cadmium expensive. Next thing you know, and of course, you know, you buy a tube of cadmium, whatever, you you and your grandchildren will probably be using that. So, since they're, okay, they, uh, this jar is not going to make 37 milliliters, of pay, even with the linseed oil. It doesn't have to, because even I will probably never go through that much. And if I don't, there's no way any of you are going to, unless you plan on painting your entire house with it, which that would be different. Ooh, looking forward to getting some of the hair here. Yeah. All that was sculpted in, by the way. Uh, actually, I do say I've done a ton of those. Oh my gosh. Gee whiz. Uh, we've done a lot of those and uh, some Reaper stuff. We did those during uh, Reaper Con. Oh gosh, I've uh, and there's way more to come. Now, can I reach it? Oh, here we go. This is actually when I was almost tempted to uh, use the fluorescent blue on with the interference paints. So this was the uh, Liquitex Heavy Gel that we use there. That's one of those uh, not Loot Studios Titan Forge. Yeah, it's one of those Titan Forge miniatures. Uh, let's see. Here, let's get a couple of more lights down here onto his leg there. Let's, uh, what do we want to have? Ah, more, maybe some more. I'm going to try more lights over then if we have to do some more shadows on the muscles there, we will. Well, muscles and sinews anyway. I'm going to take some of the Van Dyke Brown here and try and make a difference between the skin, the hair, and those muscles, if I can. I think so. All right. You, I'm going to take... Well, this. Oh, actually, this right here, the cadmium, I almost called it cadmium red, just Freudian slip right there. This is actually kind of acting like fanchion red. That's the fluorescent red. It's pretty much as opaque as fanchion red is, which is absolutely insane to think about. Uh, let's see, I'm thinking those ghostly writers could use a bit on me on the bases. Uh, I, oh, I think your phone uh, your phone betrayed you there. Yeah, my phone was doing that to me earlier today several times. I'm like, I did not type that. I typed the correct thing, and then the phone just took some liberties. It's like, uh, what were you thinking? I'm thinking that that first word was supposed to have an F in there. 
Uh, it was supposed to be a bit of me on the bases. I think that's uh, that's probably what the intention was. I'm gonna. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Uh, he's got himself a little bit of a googly eye there. He's like, whoa, man, what's so going on here? Ah, Low Seer, thank you so much, because ah, we could use some of this right now. Look at that. Boom. There we go. Celebrate. Ah, Hello, thanks, Low Seer. Spark my ganja. <laughs> well, now I know this is usually for Thousand Young. However, we're going to have a different greeting here. We're going to have ourselves a slightly different greeting because Zinch. Here's looking at you. Thank you so much for that follow. Because one can never have enough. Zinch. Zinch. So thank you so much, Zinch, uh, for that follow. That is appreciated. I thought so, Cinder. Oh, man, I'm telling you. It's like uh, I think autocorrect is also... Uh, Somehow linked with big acrylic and big oil. So yeah, that was... Oh yeah, you probably did. So at the start of the stream, I had no sound. Somehow, when the computer disobeyed and turned itself off and did updates, and I went to use Streamlabs, uh, it killed my sound. Uh, it's like, uh, I didn't do anything to the sound. Especially since I just recorded a video last night. I'm like, what the heck could have happened to the sound between literally 2 o'clock this morning and now? Ah, Zeech has some, some of the oil paints now. Yeah, Zeech, the, the, a, a decent thing to do is uh, kind of pick a couple of, even just two colors. One that's really light and one that's really dark. And pick something that has a lot of open shapes on it, maybe. And give that a try for your first miniature, just to kind of get used to the oils. Ah, see this? Look at that now. Okay. I think you can see there's some dots right there. Yeah, well, we put those there a while ago, and now... See how I'm just kind of stippling this here? See how that's kind of getting softer by itself? Yeah. If I had tried doing that a half an hour ago, maybe, and, uh, not so good. Not such a positive result. But So you have to, even with the fluoros, you, you have to let those sit there for just uh, a little while and then come back. It was the darndest thing, because Armored Wolf is like, no sound, no sound. And of course, oh gosh, the Saturday stream was just a disaster with Streamlabs just froze or whatever it did because I got no warning about dropped frames or whatever. It's just all of a sudden, boom. I had to control alt delete to get out of Streamlabs to be able to come back in again. Uh, well, Bithron, you, you've heard us talking about the my eternal war against technology. It is a death struggle. One of us will survive, the other will not. And I'm 99% sure that that won't be me. <laughs> I'm fairly certain that technology is uh, going to end up be victorious. I'm just trying to do as much damage as I can before it takes me out. That's all I'm trying to do. All right, Al, you enjoyed dinner there. That's uh, That sounds pretty yummy. Actually, it's making me hungry right now. And, uh, well, hopefully maybe we get to see it for Terrain Thursday. I don't know if we're going to be doing some more Rohan Terrain on Thursday. Or if I might try to do a couple of uh, either more scatter type pieces for Rohan or some larger building sections for Rohan. It could be a Dunlending Croft. It might even be some test terrain for Moria. Could be Gondor terrain. <laughs> it, I think the one thing we know, it's not going to be Elven terrain. That's, uh, that's about the only thing I can say. Everything else is fair game. As we lighten this up here a smidge more. 
So I do like this here. See, it can, ah, yeah, you can see that. That is the fluorescent blue. So the fluorescent blue, if you're going to use it, like relying on it to get a bluish glow, that's not going to really do too much. But if you use it to, say, mix with a cobalt blue or a phthalo green, like what we got over here, that's a different story. At that point, now you're starting to fish with dynamite. Far more effective way to get those uh, scaly buggers into your boat. Well, as long as your boat is not right on top of the grenade. We're going to add a little bit more of the blue there. So we got that warmer green up here, cooler green down there. It was We did this on the other Army of the Dead, just the infantry guy. Well, for sure, on something like the horse, we'll... We're going to want to have some color variety there too, right? I mean, it's just too big of a surface to leave that kind of plain and dead. With just a whole bunch of green, or the same tone of green, temperature of green. I'm going to go, oh yeah, more of our asphaltum here. Put some of this on a couple of the bones are going to age those and stain those maybe doing our kind of our dry brush thing again I know we emphasize it all the time we say it over and over again about the whole dry brush thing wouldn't do it if it wasn't so important and if it wasn't so true it really is more dry more better and I know there was a little bit of confusion maybe on Saturday about what, wait a minute, dry brushing? It's it's not that it is a dry brush like in acrylic where you would get that dry brush kind of texture. It's that if you were doing a dry brush in acrylic, that's about how much paint you'd have on the brush. Just uh, trying to equate it to something that folks might be familiar with already having done the acrylics. I'm going to see what I can get in here for some of our regular armor highlights, not just the lighter rust. And there's a couple of these armor bits here. And they have, it's almost like the Easterlings, where the armor kind of works in opposite directions, where like the top pieces should be covering this, whereas instead the bottom pieces are covering the top pieces. It's just this uh, really crazy way that they did the armor. Now, I know you're always looking to have something that looks different so that the factions are more distinct from each other. As we have Ryder in the house, look, we have a Ryder. Ryder, we have a Ryder for you. Uh, so, Ryder, I hope that uh, once again you the recovery continues, that you're feeling stronger today than you were on Saturday because it, it seemed like on Saturday that things were still progressing there glad that they are and let's get ourselves a couple of that's it just to make sure that that maybe stands out a little bit from the uh, regular leg, if we're going to call it that. So the not Tomb King's leg. More of our light over here. Now there is some, we have mixed some of the white with our fluorescent green and such over here. Uh, not so much to make it lighter, but to make sure we have, we don't want to just lighten that same green with the same yellow because then everywhere is going to have the same color. We don't want that. We want more variety than that. So there's a, all of a sudden now you can really start to see the individual bone sections there. Uh, not uh, not too strong today for Ryder and not able to lift the weights. Now, so Ryder is the... Are there some 
like special weights that you can use instead of kind of a typical weights like you would normally use that you can kind of uh, build up towards your regular weights. Ah, uh, right. So, well, actually, let's see. Oh, you're, uh, well, actually, this is not, this was uh, one that I painted in a video last night, but probably getting caught up on some of the, the Kazadoom dwarves there and some more of our wolves of Isengard that we were painting. Ah, the bands. We used to have a whole bunch of those. I don't know where those went. Those those were kind of nice. Uh, it'd be excellent for an archery training. Yeah, it'd be perfect for archery training. That is something that, wow, I used to love archery. I have not done that in decades. Love me some archery. That is an absolute blast. I don't care how many times that bowstring would wrap me on the forearm. Doesn't matter. It would all be worth it to be able to get to do some archery again. I think I'm going to darken some of that down too. Uh, again, this is our S. Fultum here, so not just looking for a dark light contrast, also looking for a little bit of a semi reddish brown to a deep green. Which means, if we're going to be talking about color temperature and all that sort of stuff, how's about we do that? So now you don't see, you can see the uh, reflected light down there, you don't see the warm green, bluish green there. And, and the same goes over here. So let's bring the color back into the mix here. And now again, back comes our cooler greens. Uh, the uh, writer, uh, that was back when I was doing uh, Boy Scout stuff, back in the day. I basically I, I lived in four places, Mo mostly the, the rifle range, the archery range, sailing, and horses. Those were my things. Archer, uh, rifle range, archery range, horses, and boats. Actually, never really. I've only ridden a bike three times in my whole life. I've ridden horses dozens of times. Not dozens of times, but scores of times. Ridden a bike three times. Uh, the chariots. Um, so, Ryder, uh, are you talking about the the Candish chariots? Because I'm. Uh, oh, you, uh, there's the Tomb King chariots. So the those are the only two chariots I think I've ever had. Right, were the Tomb King chariots and the. Yeah, I don't know. Nah, none for Song of Ice and Fire. So those are, well, you can't get the Tomb King's chariots anymore because those are ancient GW ones. And the other chariots, the Candish ones, those are also very ancient. You couldn't, well, they're probably out of stock on GW right now. Uh, let's see, Ryder rode a lot and uh, broke one horse. Yeah, we'd, uh, I mean, obviously these were, well, I did get to ride a retired thoroughbred once. That was basically like riding a skyscraper with fur. Because, yeah, those guys are tall. They have long legs. That was really fun. And uh, we did actually go out to a field where we could actually let the horse actually just run. Uh, so, Ryder, I have been doing the conversions on the chariots, so it'll be easier just to, well, actually, I could just grab this one here. So that was a Tomb King's chariot with Fireforge horses, actually the same Fireforge, literally the same Fireforge horse here converted with Tomb King bits. So, again, that's a Tomb King chariot 
that's been sliced in a couple of places so that it fit on the 60 millimeter base there. Uh, the problem is you cannot get those anymore. And the Candace chariots that are all metal that are really brutal to deal with, well, those are super expensive and they are, oof, they are a colossal pain. Uh, so, yeah, Ryder, you would have figured that that, uh, you're saying, wait a minute. So I jump on this horse before anybody else and I survive that. And then I, all I want to do is just drive somewhere and all of a sudden, how is that more dangerous than jumping on a horse that's never been ridden? Yeah, uh, Ryder, that's that's how that kind of works, right? It uh, when when that process happens, they just they basically start to acknowledge you as okay. I'm gonna look to whatever this guy says, and they just kind of uh, they they sort of adopt you a bit, and now that that blue's been there just a little bit longer, you see what I'm doing there, putting a little bit of. Like the blue there, and now we'll just uh, get some of the paint out of this here brush, and we'll do a bit of blending, like we do sometimes. Still cannot believe the opacity of these fluorescent paints. Yeah, writer, it's kind of funny because... Uh, I, I felt way safer on the horse than I ever did on a bike, mostly because, you know, with a bike, you could run over something that you don't necessarily see. You know, the horse does not want to fall, especially with you on top of it. So the horse is maybe going to take some extra pains to uh, remain upright. Maybe things that you can't see. Now, thanks, Armored Wolf, for posting that link there. So all of these these fluorescent paints that we're talking about here, that we created with the with the linseed oil, the powder, created this, and then now we're we're still testing them here. And so this is what was actually part of the video, and giving those colors another additional test right here. That is part of the Patreon page. It's the newest video that I just threw up there. Uh, so Grumdy, the only, obviously the only, that's so new, the only place they've dried is here on the palette. And they've dried normally. They don't look like powder. That was my big fear, was would they basically return to their powdered state? But then I shouldn't, I probably shouldn't have worried about it because this didn't. It's the same idea, right? The... The gold powder mixed it with the linseed oil it didn't turn into a powder again that was my big concern and I, armored wolf and i were both waiting we we're like yeah you know maybe at a, after a certain amount of time we were way more disappointed than we thought we were going to be but no it's uh they just still look like paint now as far as how fast they dry i couldn't well, obviously they're going to dry faster than the cadmiums because, you know, the cadmiums, what, what makes up the pigment just doesn't dry fast. That That's kind of always going to be that way. But these, I think, are going to dry faster. Just being powders. Yep, it was just the Mona Lisa linseed oil. Uh, <laughs> so, Grum, do you remember uh, I ordered... Well, I thought I had ordered the the thinner, and instead I got linseed oil. And I had I headed around. I didn't know what the heck to do with it. I'm like I don't need more linseed oil. And then that's when Deuce and other folks were suggesting, well, why don't you just mix it with the, and Valfera too? They they said, well, why don't you just mix it with some of the powders, some powdered mica flakes and other pigments, and make your own stuff. And, well, as the rest, as they say, was history. Although we keep writing brand new history, like last night. 
I'm mean, still shocked. Boy, actually, you know, Grumdy, we're starting to make a dent in that. With all these crazy videos that we're doing where we're mixing our own stuff, we're actually starting to put a little bit of a dent in that linseed oil. And I have a feeling there could be more dents put into it. Wow, and Grumdy, it was really perfect because how many times have we heard people say, well, yeah, I, I either can't get the Marion Street or they want to charge me $700 to ship it here. And it, it was just finally a way for us to say, look, if you can't get the uh, the Mona, or no, I'm sorry, the uh, Marion Street stuff, here's your option. And all of a sudden, people went from "What the heck am I going to do?" to "Ah." And it was actually a cheaper alternative as well. So I mean, hey, it's uh, you can't get much better than that. Availability, cost efficiency. That's all good. Now, of course, I don't want to, well, I get you could say there's a learning curve to mixing those sort of things, mostly in just not making a, as much of a mess. So that's, uh, yeah. But my, my reactions in that video are kind of hilarious, aren't they? Uh, let's see, print another spell brush and put them in a mini hot tub diorama. Uh, let's see. Uh, would he would he be uh, just hanging out in the hot tub with all the other wizards, with Gandalf and Saruman and Radagast? It would be the White Council. So what? 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 He just. Uh, well, I guess we could use a well. We could use a lot of water effects. Now, of course, I guess if uh, that Wapelia spellbrush has eaten lots of chocolate-covered raisins, it would also be a jacuzzi. I would suppose, maybe. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, it was fine for me to get those. No big deal. Yeah, it was uh that was no big deal, but uh for folks who just can't get those and these are cheaper because I mean granted those are giant tubes for only about fifteen, sixteen bucks. But I'm sure well, you know, this is not terribly expensive and these are maybe five dollars a piece, maybe six, seven tops. So yeah, Drax, we <laughs> we would just have a bag of chocolate-covered raisins next to the hot tub, and it would be a really nice jacuzzi there. And we could certainly do plenty of water effects for that. I mean, I frequently turned hot tubs into jacuzzis at conventions. Ah, so Grumdy, now, oh, this, uh, we were talking about Vince Venturella. I just didn't have time to do all of them, but this, I got to do this one too. Oh, and I also have to do these. All kidding aside, oop, that's not it. Well, actually, th now, do you have this one? Because I should probably do this one just to see what the heck happens. I should probably do that one too. But then, of course, there's these, and these weigh a ton. It's weird. It's kind of like how cadmium tubes weigh a lot. These weigh a ton. So I should probably mix these with oils and see what the heck happens. So yeah, don't be surprised if there's yet another video where I'm mixing those and then we try... Well, I don't think we can paint by black light. I don't think that's going to work. I... So, so Drax, do you think there's any way to film... A painting video entirely in, in black light with the fluorescent paints or no the uh, glow-in-the-dark paints 
Uh, so Grumdy, I think that's all of them, right? Uh, there's the, the green, the blue, then you've got the yellow, the bright orange, the orange, the red. So yeah, I'm not quite sure how you would go about filming a tutorial, painting video entirely in black light, but it would certainly be one of the more unusual videos ever seen. Or not seen. Ah, see that? See what I just did there? Oh, Ryder, Ryder's already tried that, and it's been successful. Well, I do not have, I do not have a DSLR, so we'll have to see if a 920 can handle that. Uh, well, Bryce, you, you know, like, <laughs> you know, at conventions, all night is uh, going by, <laughs> by the uh, magical light. Yeah, baby, that's how it works all night long. So Bryce, how are you doing? Nice to see you again. So Bryce, boy, I wish I had these uh that 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 dragon, you know, that we were painting together at Port Wapple. These things would have made it even easier than regular fluorescent paint cuz these are opaque. Yes, I'm not kidding. They are opaque. And that was where's my first That was the first test last night during the video. Those are all opaque, and then here's, uh, now we're given the green and blue. A little bit of a, a test run here, see what happens. Oh, by the way, this is three hours here for these two. Just just saying, three hours. Plus, we did mess around with another thing here, too. So, oh, that's right, we were, we were also messing around with this guy a little bit, so... Yeah, so uh, Bright, we took the the green stuff, world fluorescent, mixed it with the lean seed oil, and here's uh, one of our little mixing, and poof, that's what we ended up with, and just incredibly amazed. Oh, geez, yeah, Ryder, uh, I'm sure the those DSLRs are really nifty. We. Uh, I don't see us having one of those anytime soon. But I can I can imagine you get some really nice fine results don't and you uh you can film in way more light circumstances, right? Yeah. It doesn't have to be like the prototypical kind of well lit daylight whatever. You can go low light and well black light, right? So I'm sure that there's all kinds of fun stuff you can do in that. And now we're we're basically taking our that's our fluorescent yellow. It's mixed with actually a little bit of the white, just trying to get some of our brightest highlights in here. Geez, yeah, right. Or you try, you know, a, a much less capable camera and, and low light and all that boy you don't get much do you and now here you know i'm just going to take the same thing and we'll just let it mix with what's there well there's so many little chip marks in this and it's weird it's like a half mace it's not actually a whole mace it's a uh, just a may it's not a mace it has part of it You know, I might just let a little bit of this affect the grass over here. I'm, I just realized, well, maybe not lots of flower tufts on here because, you know, whole city of the dead thing. This is even, uh, yeah, all this just has is a little bit of ground cover on there. So, yeah, not uh, not so much with the tufts on these guys here. I am, however... See if I can throw just a, a little bit of a darker glaze down here into the recesses of that. Uh, again, this is super absorbent, these materials that we were using here. So sometimes the oils might need a little extra kick right there. Uh, 
All right, Cthulhu, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, well, it's 1.11 here, so I can definitely uh, wish you a fond good night there. And looks like we want to see what lurks in Lustria. Wow, I can only imagine if I had the oil paints for this. Ooh, that could have been pretty sweet. So this was our very first Warhammer army. There was actually a lot of scratch sculpting here. Those two engines of the gods in the back, yeah, those are scratch sculpted. Those didn't exist, never did. There's an awful lot of conversion to everywhere else. That temple guard unit, the palanquin that Babo the mage priest is on, all sculpted from scratch. And uh, these guys only ever got to be used in one game. They managed to go fail their stupid test four turns in a row which is kind of like rolling, take 10 dice, roll ones on all of them three times in a row. It was about that kind of level of, oh my gosh. So yeah, they never got used again. And oh, look at this, there's Baby Babo, also a palanquin that I made out of Sculpey and some other bits and such. That was really fun. Now, this is actually the general of the army. This was Sticky Wicket. And I, this is the only Lizard Man miniature, I think aside from one engine of the god that I still have. So, yeah, he was a skink chief, and look, at there was a painting I did of him in, uh, at Games Day in 2009. And here's uh, some more of the army again, and uh, a lot of this is on the blog. So there's at least 120 articles on my Lizardman army, I believe. Even how this temple was made, step by step. Of course, now with the pink foam, it would literally take me an hour and a half to make this thing. And it wouldn't warp or do any of the crazy things that this did. But that was really so much fun. Now, I also have something else that was sculpted much earlier here. Where's our Croak? Where are you? Ah, there you are. So this was actually done even before the... No, this was done right around the time of my Lizardman army. So that is Lord Croak on a temple that was all made out of Sculpey. That was really fun. I actually did do press molds of those little icons that you see on there. Of course, I would do that again, and I would do it entirely in foam. Oh, thanks, Grumdy. Yeah, I would do that whole darn thing in foam, and it would, again, take a fraction of the time. It would certainly not weigh six or seven pounds like that one did. And that, that was not solid Scopey. That was still hollow, but... Nevertheless, it was still Sculpey, but, you know, we just, uh, that was 2004. No, no, that was, that was more like 2005 or six, I think, yeah. But thanks, Grumby. That was uh, kind of a favorite of mine. You know what I wanted to do is I actually wanted to sculpt another Croak just as a, a figure using the old, I don't know, was it 5th or 6th edition Lizardmen? Maybe it was 5th edition Lizardmen or something. Uh, when they looked a little bit more Mayan and not quite so Aztec. There's a lot of people that like the older Lizardman look. Oh, thanks, Rach. I, I always hope that people don't get too uh, irritated by the pictures, but it is a really good way to show well, the past, right, and how the past kind of led to what we're doing now. Now, what I am going to do is just going to grab a little bit of our black here. It's going to hit the side of the base real quick here. Because as I'm darkening this up, it's right next to this gray that's left over on the base here. And I just want to cover that up so that I don't kind of get myself confused here. Yeah, let's get rid of that, too. All righty. Like so. And a little bit under there. All right. So that kind of helps. Uh, I think our... I think I could actually hit that again, too. Maybe even some there. And I think... Yep, we already did that earlier. I'm going to reinforce that, though, a little bit here. Ah, uh, and I'm going to get the uh, under there a little bit. All right, good to go. That's better. Uh, Aussie has to head out now. Well, Aussie, I will uh, 
I'll be sure to let you know when that thing gets sent off. The earliest that would be, oh, not Wednesday, I'd say Thursday or Friday. Honestly, if uh, you're looking for a timeline when I'll be sending you a message saying, hey, it's on its way again. But I do want to double check the address, though. So that if you just send the address again, and then I'll, I'll send you a picture of the, uh, the label so that you guys would have all the numbers and keep track of it. Speck of Spud, how are you doing? Nice to see you back. We're just having a blast here with our brand new, whoops, wrong guy, our homemade, hand-mixed, literally hand-mixed fluorescent oil paints. This has really been a blast here, right? I uh, hope that your week got off to a good start there, Speck of Spud. Uh, not, not too much craziness on a Monday. Don't need craziness on a Monday. Yeah, no problem, Ozzy. And where's the... Uh, oh, here he is. Let me see if I can grab him without knocking everything down. There we go. So this is uh, this is what you'll be looking for, this guy here. So that would be the one. Oh, boy, Grumdy. You know what I keep forgetting to do is uh, is get some pictures of the overall board. Actually, I should... Maybe I'll just... Uh, just find the blog post or something like that too because we did actually play two games on that board seriously we actually played games on that display board and it was uh it was pretty crazy that was pretty fun it was uh one game well actually both games were part of a five part scenario no a four part scenario first one started on the on the board and the last one ended on the board. And actually, that uh, that red moat that you see, that was a, basically a, a moat of blood. And you had to take uh, some, I think it was either a armor to some kind of a test. If you rolled a, well, any roll of a one, basically, you, you, <laughs> you got eaten by the blood uh, moat there. Uh, it was it was a crazy game, and and of course the the army board that actually was all kidding aside, this was several t orders of magnitude more complicated than that. Here, let's get to our tomb kings here. There we go. So that army board made that thing look like a a, a kindergarten project. All kidding aside, because what you can't see underneath there, well, first of all, there's several lights on the inside. There's about 30 or 40 little fiber optic cables in there that are actually lighting up like a constellation, a, a whole sky panorama in the ceiling. And all of those hieroglyphs actually say, it. basically it tells the story of the corruption of Susenes. And of course, well, then again, our sisters of battle here, this was another bit of a side project to where's our sisters? There we go. Uh, is that them? Yes. So there we go. That uh, that little cathedral light there for the sisters of battle with the stained glass windows. Yeah, that was that was a bit of an interesting project right there. You can see how big it is and how tiny the figures are. And of course, this was our most recent terrain piece right there, Monte Casino for our full shim Jaegers. Oh, thanks, Offbeat Art. Yeah, these are... Uh, I'm, extra, I'm extra looking forward to seeing these guys uh, doing some stuff on the table, I think. I think that's going to be really fun to see. All right, a little bit more of our Essentially, a little bit of an opaque, lighter yellow. Uh, well, Grumdy, I think, uh, well, the Proxon, you know, once I can get that thing going, and when you see some of the Gondor terrain that I want to do, it might just make that, actually, it's not might, it will. That thing is going to look like, uh, again, just some kind of kid's popsicle stick project or something like that. 
Now, of course, I have to say I only had two days. I think it was about two and a half days to make that entire board. So there was a bit of a time crunch on that. So that was uh, that was pretty quickly put together. And uh, there's a whole bunch of, it's all cataloged on the blog. Uh, just wapeliusblogspot.com. You just kind of do searching for Sisters of Battle, and uh, that should most likely come up. So I am hope, and the Moria board is probably going to require even more complexities than the Gondor boards. And we'll do some more of our, there we go. There's a couple of things here, maybe even on that hoof there. And then we did get some of our blue down there, which was nice. See, I think you can even see there's a couple of different colors here, right? You got the warmer greens, the blues, even that phthalo green sitting there. Then you got this kind of almost a more of a bluish color, and then you've got some of that brown tan skin color. Uh, let's see. Ah, yep. Um, Let's see. Oh, Crocodile needs some more cool terrain sets, but I struggle with inspiration when it comes to building. Uh, Crocodile, it's, uh, well, of course, you know, that your, your 40K thing, lots of flying buttresses, right? Lots of insets. And, of course, well, the, the Rohan stuff was just kind of tailor-made. Now, we're going to be doing some Dunlending Crofts. So instead of the wood that you see here and the thatched roof, what I want to have is stone walls. So kind of like, see that stone texture we've got on the ground there, or on the floor, basically. That's going to be the walls, and then the roof is going to be turf roofs. So don't be surprised if maybe you see a Dunlending Croft also being done on Thursday. Oh, geez, Grumpy. Even the, the Dark Elf one, that was done in just a couple of days. And the Dark Elf one, maybe it wasn't as tall as the Sisters of Battle one, but it was huge. It was literally huge because where's our... We can get those for you real quick. Where's our Dark Elves? There they are. So see that little tiny thing sitting up on top of the that one tower? That's a That's the big Razor Wing or whatever. That's a giant flyer right there. That's a... That's this thing. Okay, that's a flying base, a, a big oval flying base, which is sitting on top of that tower. That's how big that thing is. Uh, because there's, uh, oh yeah, there's four of those. And there's one of these. There's something like 20 infantry and about 20 of those uh, razor wing jet bikes, whatever the heck they were called, or Venom jet bikes. I don't know, I don't remember. So that was uh, that was another sizable project right there. And of course, again, if I had it to do it over today, I could have much more depth in it because I just know how to... Because you saw me trimming down those foam pieces literally into little strips like this, right? That you can shape and do all kinds of fun things with. I'm just uh, tempted. No, nope. I'm not going to do that. I was tempted to cover up my blue highlight right there. Not going to do that. Nope. I'm going to get rid of some of that green that was there. That's some of the earliest painting we did on this guy here. We're going to alter that a little bit. And then here, I can see we've got, well, not much of anything going on. We're still working with some of our fluorescent blue of all things here. There we go. Some on the inside of this leg. We're doing that blind blending thing that we talk about. Uh, now, so Crocodile, I guess, uh, what would you say for a slin uh, like slanishi terrain? Would that be a lot of... Uh, uh, fire, no, uh, 
lots of mirrors. <laughs> I don't know. Would that be a Slanishi terrain thing? Lots and lots of mirrors. I mean, obviously, for things like the, the Middle Earth stuff, it's really easy to, to come up with some inspiration behind things there. I, I would like to maybe try and make some statues and see if I can make those out of foam somehow. Ah, oh, yeah. Well, yeah, that would uh, definitely gilded details. Uh, of course, uh, uh, just uh, for whatever reason, what was it Sigvald with the mirrored shield? That, or no, was it Sigvald that had the mirrored shield? I, I don't remember anymore. Nah, Grumdy, actually, I still have all of those. I still have them all. They're, well, they're all down in the basement, actually. Be, even the Monte Casino board, that was still meant to be terrain. That was actually meant to have games played on it. Yeah, I guess Crocodile, you know, you could... Uh, Gets you know gets statue. Well, of course, now in the day and age of three D printing, some like you say, a demonic statues that kind of thing could be really interesting. That sort of delicate and pretty yet demonic at the same time. There's got to be some way to do that. I mean, of, of course, you could just get a whole bunch of uh, creature caster miniatures and just paint them up as statues. That would be that would be a pricey way of doing that, wouldn't it? <laughs> and then you'd have to assemble all of them, which would also be uh, that would just that would be the painful part of it, right there, the excruciating part of it. Especially if it was at the Suzerain of Desire or the. The twins, I guess it, it basically goes by many names. Ah, so Sigvald did have the uh, ye old mirrored shield. Well, Grumdy, I guess uh, you know you could try and do that, but uh, you might have somebody. Uh... Now we do have a steel door for the front door, but. Uh, they could still probably do some battering ram stuff on that, I would think, to try and get down there and maybe uh, get to the bottom of that particular uh, that particular show. I'm thinking that would not get lots of public approval there, for sure. Now, what do with this one here? Now, it is interesting that these... Uh, well, the Schmabels, as we call them, they're not really a Sable. Sable, they just kind of get worn down as you keep using them, which is kind of interesting because they actually get to a finer tip the more they get worn down because there's fewer and fewer bristles on the brush, which is kind of funny. Ah, so, so actually, see, that... Uh, yeah, see, Crocodart, that's what I... I need more mirrors in this house. That's what I need. Because cause nothing... Nothing like, nothing like a, you know, to inspire me, I need to see more of me. Something like that. So mirrors on every wall, on the floor maybe, on the ceiling, on the furniture. It would be like Versailles, just a far more demented version of that... <laughs> There you go. It would be it would be a very demented Versailles. For sure. Lots of artwork on the wall. Also mirrors. Uh, so there you go. That that there is your terrain inspiration. Now you have to go make it happen. So yeah, just a couple of more of our highlights there. Now we're gonna once again, take this, and we're going to... We don't want that to just be a spot of that light color. We're going to... The miniature is our palette. Let's let it be the palette. However, I couldn't have done this a few hours ago because the paint would have just been too wet there, right? Uh, so, Nick, 
uh, whether it's uh, we're painting our army figures or vehicles or busts or anything like that, most of the time we're just using, so this is regular oil paint mixed with our high quality thinner and I just throw it in these containers for convenience. It's actually so much easier getting out of the containers here. Now as somebody who's used oil paints for a long, long, long time, these days I just squeeze them out of the tube onto my palette and I just throw some thinner on them maybe about an hour before I'm going to start, right? Now these new things that we're using right here, so these are basically pigment powders that have been mixed with linseed oil and we created these. So these are essentially fluorescent oil paints. Now thinning the paint takes different form. There's there's the liquid thinning, but there's more to it than that. There's also this. This is actually many times when I'm painting you'll see me doing nothing more than this where there's that little paint on the brush but because the paint is wet here you actually get a surprising amount of mixing as you woke man ugly how are you doing nice to see you happy Tuesday and all that so yeah Nick and sometimes it's even drier than that but then sometimes we're doing a pin line wash that's what we did with our rust and uh, you actually can see it here so we did some of our pin line washes in there on this guy just like we did here and now again here this was a uh, obviously a different approach because we have our object source lighting here and we didn't need any rust or anything but this was done with those the brand new well all of these all three of these here we're done with our brand new oil paints that we mixed ourselves, literally from powders and linseed oil. <laughs> Just, uh, man, so much fun. I, I know we've talked about them a lot, but they didn't exist. I only, I only finished filming that video 24 hours ago. What is it, 1.34 in the morning? That's about when I finished filming the video. So they have now been in existence for 24 hours. And I'm already just finding more and more possible uses for them here. Which is really cool. No doubt about that. And here's another example of just how dry that brush gets. I mean, you can see how little, whoop, there you go, how little paint there is on that brush. Because the, the number one issue that happens with folks is that they're pretty much ladling it on like it's a steam shovel. And there's also too much liquid in there. Part of that stems from, well, acrylics, where as soon as you put the paint on that brush, it's drying. So what do people do? They throw a whole bunch of liquid on that brush. So that they kind of carry that over with the oils and that they run into lots of problems doing that. And that's uh, we try to come up with those little sayings to kind of remind people, look, use that dry brush technique, not lots of water. Less is more, more is way too much. All those little Book of Wapple sayings that we do, they, as much as we enjoy them and get a kick out of them, they do actually have some purpose. I'm going to take, uh, you know what? A little bit more of our lighter opaque green here to some of our little bit of, bits of static grass. This is the uh, our ground cover from Luke's APS. There's several different types. This is probably the arid wasteland variety I'm thinking. Also, it's on tree bark if you're wondering. Yeah, that's tree bark there. We, do, we use bark and branch very often for our basing. So, yeah, the oils are the same, whether it's, you know, tree beard or tiny little vehicles like these. Literally, those vehicles are barely an inch long. Our orc def copter, painting buildings, you know, more of our done landings, our Moria dragon, this wood nymph, all of this stuff, and our thousand suns, and our here, there's our thousand suns. So all of that again done with the oils. Uh, 
and uh, and uh, Landers used bowl and branch for the sheets. Uh, boy, uh, Landris, I've got to get that uh, that plaster that you had. I've got to get some of that and, and start trying that stuff out, right? Uh, if one would like to get eliminated uh... Uh, so Ugly, there is no color set or anything like that. Uh, Terra Rosa is really going to be a good bet for you because Terra Rosa can also make rust, which is a... So there's your Terra Rosa. And here is our... So this is a good example. So here's our AON that we painted. Lots of Terra Rosa. However, there's uh, the other colors that are going to be in there are things like, obviously, your Brilliant Yellow Pale, right? Because you wanted to get too pink. You're probably going to have some kind of a reddish color, and you're definitely going to have to have some kind of a brownish gray. So maybe something like a Van Dyke brown. You're probably going to want some umber. Oh, yeah, Landress, definitely you sent a link. I just have to. I, I have had no time to even get things in carts or anything like that. So kind of looking forward to maybe Wednesday or Thursday where things are a little bit less nuts, and I can try and snag some of that stuff. Yeah, so Ugly, uh, again, the, the Terra Rosa is definitely, that's your that's a really good starting point there. But you probably already have things like Umber. I don't know if you have a Van Dyke Brown, but that's good for a lot of things, right? And, and then some kind of an off-white yellow is not, not terrible to have. So I think you got those. You should be able to make lots of fun skin tone. Because obviously skin tone has to have a lot of gray to it. It almost needs to have some greenishness to it, especially depending on the the age, gender, whatever of the person. And we're just going to throw in a little more of our lighter fluorescent green right in there, right along that edge, just to get it to separate from the the armor and then down here we want to just uh, do a little bit of a whoops that's not the one that's the one I wanted here a little bit of brush stroke management right here not so much about mixing these colors it's just there was kind of a blob of paint there so there's a big old blob of paint there now we kind of knock down all the blobs there right So Landrest, uh, it would be uh, different if the Green Stuff World stuff came in a gigantic package, but you go through that stuff alarmingly fast, right? And I was just, uh, it was kind of nice to see something that could potentially substitute for that, especially given all the Gondor buildings we want to make out of it, or out of those molds, which you might be seeing some of those too, some of the... Green Stuff World, Stoneworks Molds. Where's that uh, picture here? Ah, here we go. So you might be seeing me working on more terrain that looks like that. And uh, there's another view of it right there. Now, obviously, much more complex than that because that was a tutorial video, and it was the first time I'd ever used those. And the instructions, not super complete, given the fact that uh, Green Stuff World is a Spanish company. So... Yeah, the, the instructions weren't terribly useful, at least not for me. So I had to kind of figure things out a little bit. Here, let me, I'm just going to look at something over here. There we go. Now, I want that to still be dark. This, and working a little bit of, Reflect the light on the bottom of that. What's going to happen here with our little skelly friends? I think we've darkened those down sufficiently. So I'm just going to throw in some few little lights on the rocks around them to try and bring that up to speed there. And yeah, actually, oh, uh, that's the other thing too is the oils are a little bit easier to paint static grass with the oils than it is with the acrylics, mostly because I can have this tiny little dot of paint on here and keep going with it and not drying or anything. 
So that is something that I've also discovered. And the other thing too is it because it doesn't have water in it, it doesn't make your static grass just go and just kind of fall over. Uh, which is why it should be interesting to be able to paint our Rohan roof with the oils. And we're going to get ourselves a little bit more, like right around where our horsey is. I want to say. Lighten up his hooves right there. Uh, I think we'll throw a couple more lights right around in here, just to, especially with the spear there. This rock here. More of our lights right along here. And now I'm going to bring down, this is what we painted on Friday, I believe, of last week. I just want to compare these two. So here we did use our fluorescent green, the regular, uh, not Windsor Newton, the Marion Street variety. And there's, we still got some punch there, but look, there's some differences in the color, right? You can see some of those greens are more blue. You can see some are more yellow. And then especially when we get up to the antlers. So this was obviously a specific object source light, whereas this is just kind of ethereal, right? It's all kind of got a little bit of a glowiness to it. Ah, Fern, how are you doing? Uh, yep, we uh, basically, anytime you see me painting on stream, it's going to be oil paints. Because well, it, it really does make that much easier, painting on stream. But it's also so much more efficient as far as time. And the results that you get, pretty much un, not comparable. And the durability is fantastic. The luminosity is unbelievable. So we love doing our oil paints here. You know, not necessarily just on stream. We film lots of tutorials with the oils. Actually, now this is a, well, there was a Twitch session, but I kind of cut it down. He was part of about five or six figures I was painting. I just, this is my newest YouTube video right here. So we did all the, the textured cloth, all this done with oils again. The horse, sorry, everything done with the oils. And that is our newest YouTube video. So I think we painted Boromir. Yeah, we painted at least five miniatures that night. And I just kind of broke that one out and made a YouTube video out of it. Hopefully we can do the same thing with the Boromir as well. That's kind of an interesting thing about the Saturday challenge when we're doing multiple figures, right? Oh, Oaken Brush. That's... Uh, two Tory oils. I like that. I think, uh, <laughs> well, we already have Wapo Floros, right? We have our Wapo oils. Why not have two Tory oils? Oh, actually, you know what? Uh, of course, Oak and Brush. Now, what do you snack on between tutorial, you, you, Ori oils, right? Ori oils. I think that, uh, yeah, you should be able to snack on those in between tutorial oils. Yeah, you could, you could tell it's now 1.45 in the morning here. And, yeah, I think we had about four hours sleep last night or so. Yeah, there, there were times that I couldn't even tell. I was like, okay, was that a dream or is was i actually awake for that uh i don't i don't know it was a crazy night and uh i think yeah we've got that pretty solid here let's take another look of wow these extra are getting brighter as they dry seriously this i looked at this and went Boing, this is actually brighter now than when I first looked at it. Because I think actually that's right. I hadn't had a chance to use this quite as much on our other. Yeah, there wasn't quite as much of it on this one. Yeah, Landris, well, 
Um, hopefully we get more than four hours of sleep tonight, that's for sure. We, we really definitely need more than that. Of course, uh, we, we surprised Armored Wolf last night with a pocket dial. But, uh, yeah, I just, uh, phone goes into the pocket, and the next thing you know, there's a very curious voice coming out of your pocket. And you've either, well, I guess that's one consequence of maybe not sleeping, is you hear voices coming out of your pocket, but I guess that's a whole other issue right there. Now, it's the ultimate olive. Every, almost everything we've been using has been the fluorescent paints here. So, obviously, we've got, you know, the orange ones that we've been using. Spark my ganja. But uh, here's the three. So, on our Army of the Dead, obviously, we've been using regular oil paints, too. But this is what we've been using. That's what we've been uh, talking about, right, with the powdered pigments like so. So, yo, how are you doing? Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. And he's like, Really, where, where's that Aragorn, dude? He was supposed to be here. We've only been waiting for him for like thousands of years. It's like, well, you realize he is only 90 years old, right? It's like, oh, well, then what about the other guy that cursed us? It's like, oh, uh, he's not around anymore. Uh, sorry, sorry, yo. That, uh, that just has to happen. There has to be puppet shows. Uh, you yeah, okay, Grumdy, if we start breaking out into oil snacks? I I think so, Grumdy. I think we're going to be in some serious trouble. So, yeah, Olive, uh, what I want to do is try some other things. Like, oh, where's this one here? Remember this one? I think you got to see this one, right, Olive? I want to try the fluorescent blue to see if it makes any kind of difference here. Well, it will. This will now. Don't tell Prussian blue this, but I think the fluorescent blue would actually be more intense here than the Prussian blue. Just, just don't let the Prussians know about it because that could be bad. That could be really bad. Uh, so, Deuce, um, we really. <laughs> so now I'm, I'm really starting to wonder, what's going to happen with this, right? Because Obviously, these other ones are opaque. This one has to be opaque, too. So what happens when you start mixing this with regular oil paints? Huh? Yeah, could be fun, right? And the, I'm just going gonna, gonna to have to do this pink. I did not think it was going to be quite that atomic, but it actually is even more atomic than the magenta was. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. <laughs> Ah, oh, Fernand, thank you very much. That is appreciated. Hello, little hobbits. Once again, horse that did not use performance in anting, horse that did and kind of abused him. He's like, yeah, I, I, I might have done it a little too crazy with the performance enhancers. So, yes, show them the meaning of haste. He's like, roll gain lightning. There he is. That's roll gain lightning. That's about as fast as he can move there. Uh, let's see. Computer froze up for a second. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, Olive. Uh, well, <laughs> I'm glad it was your computer that froze up and not this one, right? Like the other day when Streamlabs, I had to control out, delete out of Streamlabs. That was definitely no fun. But I tell you, this, say, Ma, this was the the biggest surprise is the opacity in these I, I mean i've used fluorescent paints for years and years and years and i've never seen anything opaque now, olive is, is ready to take one for the team so hopefully when big oil comes after us for having uh tutori oils and ori oils for for snacks <laughs> the then we'll just we'll just throw Olive out in front. Olive is going to be the human shield that protects us from big oil and big acrylic. Uh, so ultimate Olive, like we were saying, all it is is just the powder and linseed oil in here. A brush, mix it, done. 
I think uh, so. Armored Wolf. I think I headed down or no? Uh, Armored Wolf was it? Uh, maybe two hours the entire filming process, and I mixed eight of them plus painted a figure. So yeah, Ultimate Olive. It's uh, now it tickle. It takes a little while to get used to just how much linseed oil goes in there. Because I had no idea. I'd never done it before. But the last two, I was able to do two of them and the time it took me to do the first one. So just kind of like anything else, right? You kind of get an idea for what the heck you're supposed to do. And everyone, if you could please uh, support our moderator, Armored Wolf, by checking out the Armored Wolf Etsy page. And also, just look at the just look at the Armored Wolf Instagram page, and you will be stunned and amazed at all of the fantastic artwork that's there. Not just the dice bags, which are incredible, but also you know journal covers and other wearable type art too, like barrettes. Yes. And again, please support our moderator because Armored Wolf has been working really hard for seven hours. Armored Wolf has not had a chance to have fun screwing around with these fluorescent paints here. Armored Wolf has just been doing his regular work, dealing with me for seven plus hours. Ah, one hour and 41 minutes. Typical 100 minute long video. And that that's uh, pretty much when you're getting your tutorial vids. Now, there are some that go two and a half hours. The average is more like two. You know, two hours, maybe 155 minutes, uh, so, no, 100 and uh, maybe about 110 minutes ish, something like that. And now, our next, the next video that I do will probably be an army painting video. It's either that or a dark sword. So, one of those two. Of course, maybe we'll have to try these on a dark sword. I don't know. Because, you know, more object source lighting, more better, right? Who does not love more objects? I know, I know Bettany is, is not the world's biggest object source lighting fan, but fortunately I am. So, yay. Well, at least for me. At least for me, that works out well. And I had thought about doing the whole glowing eye thing right here. But with this one also right next to it, that doesn't make as much sense. So we, I think we'll stay away from doing that. What I am going to do, though, is take a little bit of this, uh, the S Fultum. And I can see right here, there is a little bit that the pre-glaze mixed. Not anymore. That's good to go. Same thing over here. Just uh, trying to fill out where the pre-glaze might have missed something. This hair down here. And, you know, there's actually two straps on this. Uh... Okay, I've ridden a lot of horses. I don't remember two straps being there. Ah, uh, so big acrylic is... Uh... See, look at this. You summon big acrylic, you say it too often. Like we were talking about, our cell phones are always listening to us. Yeah, you don't think big acrylic's listening? Big acrylic is always listening. Uh, so, Fernet, the, the three brands that we pretty much use here, and I'll just I'll get them out here for you. There's our Gamlin, and one more. There we go, Williamsburg. So... These are the three brands. And basically what we'll do with these is we'll take these, we'll thin them down with a high-quality thinner. We'll put them in a jar, kind of like so, with a little bit of an agitator in there. And it's basically the consistency of miniature paint. The original idea came from these guys, which again are about the consistency of miniature paint. However, this is a not an ideal container. It looks great. It's it's kind of unbreakable, which is nice. But anybody who's had these for longer than a few years, which I have, well, those things start to stick really bad. 
and it becomes very painful. Now uh, here, let the, that one goes up there. So big acrylic is 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 here to try and take away our fun, as always. So well met, big acrylic. Are you here for a challenge? Yeah, that's a big acrylic. Just wants to see this, right? It just wants to see that. No. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my gun. Oh, thank you so much, Quirik. That is appreciated. Hello, little hobbit. Spark my guncha. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, you sure that horse can go over water? It's like, uh, how do you think he ended up this way? Oh, thank you very much. That's so, uh, that is appreciated there. Ah, uh, now, big acrylic, is that because you had mastered the auto clogging pots? Yeah, I think so. You you figured like the auto clogging technology was totally perfected, so you figured that you would just have them kind of dry out in there too. Which, <laughs> oh man, we are definitely going to an unpleasant place in the afterlife because we are definitely evil. Yes, uh. Well, you'd, uh, I think Big Acrylic and Big Tech are definitely in cahoots together because remember, we started out the stream and for no reason, there was no sound. I literally did nothing except just open up Streamlabs and poof, no sound. Yeah, that, that, and uh, let's see what we have. That's a uh, Catalan. Now, of course, it has. It's definitely lessened from what it was before the Twitch experience because you have so many other Twitch streamers that are doing it now. It's kind of hard to deny. Uh, like a uh, like Thunderhead, right? He's. I think he's painting oils on Thursdays and Sundays now. And of course, you got Steela and Drax and Pun Expected and all the other folks that are streaming the oils and. I can't go by one day of Instagram without somebody kind of showing off either their new paints Hello, that they mixed Hobbits, spark my or something that they painted with the oils, right? And thank you so much, Jelly. That is appreciated. Hello, little hobbits. Look, look, do we need to do the PSA thing again? It's like, kids, don't do performance enhancers. You'll end up like that. It's like, well, you know, I did use them for thousands of years, so there's that. Let's try them once in a while. Oh, yeah, pieces of eight, right? Pieces of eight. Five pieces of eight could buy you everything I used for painting oils for four years. Yeah. Paint, brushes, sponges, thinner. Yeah. Or you could get five jars of contrast paint. The choice is yours. Ah, well, big, <laughs> big paint. Uh, I think that's it. Like everybody, who knows? Maybe Williamsburg, maybe, maybe even Williamsburg is after us. Now, of course, the ultimate coup for us would be to be mixing our own yin min blue, right? What if we're making our own pots of yin min blue? That would be, oh gosh, uh, more than just helicopters. I think we'd have assault vehicles showing up right at the front door. We haven't played around with the fluorescent yellow, the, our, our brightest fluorescent yellow here. I haven't played around with that for a while. I just want to mess around with it again here. Ah, see, look at that big acrylic. Uh, I'm sure that big acrylic is doing a finger steeple right now. Of course, if Big Acrylic had fingers, but not so sure they did. I just, uh, after seeing this one here with the intensity of the yellow on that, 